All right, so it is about time to get started. I know we have more people joining us, so welcome as you all log in. Uh, my name is Brooke. I'm one of the admission counselors over at Rollins. A um, little bit of history, I attended Rollins as a student, um, both for my undergrad and my master's degree. Uh, originally, I'm from Wisconsin, so I'm from the Midwest, and um, I didn't know a single thing about Rollins or Orlando or Winter Park um, as I was looking at colleges. So um, clearly I loved it so much that I stayed. I'm currently an Orlando resident. So uh, I am excited to just share a little bit about the area with all of you who may be in the same boat um, considering Rollins from far away. Um, Lindsay, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, my name is Lindsay Clark and I am as um, in addition to Brooke, one of the admission counselors here at Rollins. Um, I was born and raised in Pensacola, Florida, which is on the panhandle of Florida. And then I came to Rollins as a student and studied international relations. And I have a minor in Australian studies. And as Brooke described, I too fell in love with the Winter Park and Orlando areas and our campus community and really never left. So I've been working for admission ever since graduation for little over nine years now um, and I work with our students from Colorado as well as our transfer students. And we have two students, um, current Rollins students tuning in tonight. Um, if Raul and Gabby, you would like to introduce yourselves. Gabby, you can take the floor, ladies first. <laughs> Thanks. Um, my name is Gabby. Um, I'm a junior. I transferred to Rollins uh, as a sophomore. I'm originally from Middletown, Connecticut, um, and I am an English major and a writing minor. Hello, everyone. My name is Raul. I am an international student from the Dominican Republic. I am a current senior majoring in international relations with minors in economics and Middle Eastern and North African studies. And I work at Rollins as an assistant hall director for our first year halls. Awesome. So we're excited to get started. Um, and just a little bit of um, housekeeping. If you guys have any questions at any point, there is a Q&A section. Um, if you hover over your screen, it should be at the bottom of your screen. You can type any questions you have in that Q&A box, and we are going to be happy to address those. Our plan is to go through our, our presentation that we have here and then get to questions at the end. So um, we will save all of those towards the end, but type them in at any point. Um, all right, so we're going to kick it off with um, the, the first reason. We have 10 reasons why um, this is the best college city in the United States. And so we'll go with uh, reason number one, which is our own backyard in Winter Park. So if you don't know, Rollins is located in Winter Park, which is kind of like a suburb of Orlando. It's about 10 minutes north of the city of Orlando. And Winter Park is just a really charming, quaint uh, little residential town. Um, almost every weekend and even weeknights, you'll see people from all over Central Florida flocking to Park Avenue, which is um, just an extension of campus. Park Avenue ends on the Rollins campus. So um, with, within walking distance, our students have access to world-class shopping, um, deluxe dining, um, and so, You'll see our students out and about in Winter Park all of the time, and then um, you'll see Winter Park residents supporting um, the Rollins events on our campus as well. So our sporting events and um, performing arts. So it's, we've got a really great relationship with the town. Um, there's lots going on in Winter Park. So every Saturday, there's a farmer's market our students like to attend. Um, Gabby, what's one of your favorite Winter Park things to do? I personally love the farmer's market. Um, like you said, I go every weekend, not kidding. Um, <laughs> they have like a stand. Um, they have like a kombucha stand. I love kombucha. So I go I get a kombucha every week. Um, they also have like so many plants. It's really fun to walk around. I like to go with my roommates a lot. 
Yes, we love the farmer's market. Um, there's also a lot of festivals that go on in Winter Park. So um, this picture here is one of the art festivals. We have a fall and a spring art festival. And um, I think the spring art festival is one of the largest art festivals in Florida. So it brings in a lot of people and it's always fun to walk around. Um, but in the holidays, that's one of the best times on Park Avenue lights up and there's lots of um, community concerts on the lawn and movies on the lawn. Uh, so you can bring, you know, your dog and a picnic and set up and just watch a movie out in that space. Um, so it's really this charming kind of community feel. Um, one of my favorite things to do, and I never fail to take visitors on, is the Winter Park Scenic Boat Tour. It's open, um, I think, 364 days a year, and uh, they take tourists out on the chain of lakes. So Rollins is located on a, a lake called Lake Virginia, which is connected to, I think, three or four different lakes by canals. And so this tour will take you on um, three of the lakes and give you a little history of Winter Park and Rollins. Uh, it's just a really great thing to do if you're in town. So if you come to visit, please, please check out the scenic boat tour. All right, Lindsay, you can take the next one. All right. Thanks, Brooke. So in addition to us loving our location for our town of Winter Park, we also love it for our city itself. So um, Rollins is located just 15 minutes to downtown Orlando or just a quick 12 to 15 minute ride um, on the Sun Rail which there's a station just two blocks up from our campus that would take you right to downtown, um, which is our sun rail is essentially our commuter rail that goes through central Florida. So it's nice and convenient to have that right by campus. Uh, but downtown Orlando is filled with entertainment options. We've recently been recognized um, the second most fun city in America and the second most creative city in America. Also recognized as the best city for recreation and is among the top 25 cities for new college grads to live, work, and play. Uh, for me personally, coming from Pensacola, one of the things I love most about um, the proximity to Orlando is also the proximity to our international airport, just about 30 to 40 minutes up the road from campus. Um, it's very, I think, makes our campus and um, community accessible to a lot of out-of-state students and international students, and it makes for weekend trips or um, holiday trips, you know, pretty reasonable with direct flight options and a lot of um, options to choose from. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so in addition, um, you'll find that Orlando is a very vibrant um, town for arts scene as well as sports, entertainment, and nightlife. Um, students can catch a Broadway show at the new Dr. Phillips Center for Performing Arts, which is located in the heart of downtown. Um, it's also been named recently as one of the world's coolest tourist attractions by Travel and Leisure. Um, in addition, students can take in an Orlando Magic game or the Orlando City Soccer in their brand new soccer stadium downtown. Um, or just take a swan boat tour as this picture shows and take in the beautiful skyline, um, which is also home to another farmer's market and different festivals that gather around Lake Eola. One of my um, most favorite traditions of the city is the Orlando Fringe Festival. Um, the Art Museum and Orlando Shakespeare Theater are actually just two miles up the road from campus. And this is the area that hosts the Fringe Festival every May. Um, and it's actually the longest running Fringe Festival in America. So it's a, a fun spot um, for our students and our community. Awesome. So we talked about um, where we're located, our direct um, town, and then we talked about our larger city that we're a part of. So we also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what's right beyond our city limits. One of the greatest things about our location is we are right smack in the center of the state. So it is not too far to get um, north, south, east, or west of us um, to, out to the beaches or out to the springs. Um, and so there's just a lot to do and 
all, never a dull weekend. One of the things our students like to do is check out the springs nearby. Um, we have Wakaiva Springs, Blue Springs, um, and just, just a beautiful, natural place to go. Our students like to go tubing, kayaking, um, they can rent paddle boards. Uh, so that's our, always a really fun thing. Raul, do you have anything to add about not too far off? Yeah, so definitely the springs are a big point. Actually, I was a peer mentor my sophomore year, and we took my group of students, my RCC, we took them to a private spring because it was an RCC about environmental activism. So it's really nice to have just like, I feel like it's just a perfect balance because you're living in kind of a, of a suburb here in Winter Park, then you have a main city in downtown Orlando, and then you have a lot of natural space around you. So it, you really get every single like kind of lifestyle, which is awesome in my opinion. And then I always love going to the Gulf beaches. So Sarasota, Bradenton, you can go to Siesta Key, which is like a, a top beach. Like actually it was like rated number one beach in the U.S. And then also Bush Gardens in Tampa. I'm a really, really, really big fan of Bush Gardens. So I go there all the time. Yes, so we're really close to the beaches as well. It only takes about an hour to get to Cocoa Beach and about two hours if you want to go out to the West Coast um, and, and check out St. Pete, which is a really fun town. Um, Clearwater, all of those beaches are great as well. Um, so obviously coming down to Florida from Wisconsin, that was important to me and still is. I go to the beach as much as I can, um, as many weekends as possible. Awesome. So another reason why we love um, Orlando and our surrounding area, especially to live, work and play and study would be for the entertainment aspect. Um, if you're like me growing up, you think of Orlando just as, you know, the theme parks and things like that, which we certainly have right up the road from us, um, whether it's Disney, Universal, uh, the water parks, um, or the sixth tallest Ferris wheel off of I drive. We have dozens and dozens of attractions to choose from, and there's really never a dull moment or um, boring time in Orlando. Um, so Disney itself is just about 45 minutes up from campus. Um, very convenient and easy to get to. And we do offer discounted tickets for students. I've had friends that go to Disney three or four times a week even just to catch the fireworks show after class or go to the food and uh, wine festival on the weekends, but if you're like me, maybe you just go once a year when family's in town. So it's nice to have that option up the road, but it definitely doesn't define your Rollins experience if you're not big into the theme parks, but it's definitely nice, um, you know, to have that in our area. We also have Universal right up the road within about 30 minute drive to campus. Um, and we've had students intern and ultimately work there as well. Um, but I believe Raul was going to share some of his experience experience uh, with the entertainment of Orlando. Yeah, so first of all, I'm really thankful that you mentioned the water park because uh, like a lot of people just think I'm like Universal and Disney, but hey, you also have Aquatica, uh, you have Wet and Wild, and now you have Volcano Bay, uh, which is like Universal's new water park. So that's really cool, especially when things start getting hot, like towards like late spring and the summer and then like also early fall. Um, and then also like downtown Orlando and the surrounding area, especially International Drive, there are just so many entertainment options that go beyond, you know, your classical theme park. So whether it's Escape the Room, um, awesome mini golf courses, even like up in Altamont Springs and also like around International Drive. And then something that we don't think about um, when we see these complexes of the parks like Universal and Disney is the fact that they also have their own like, you know, nightlife and entertainment districts, which are like Disney Springs and Universal City Walk respectively. So there's just like a lot of opportunities for you, like just to walk around and like find something new to do you with, with your friends. You can either like plan beforehand and like go and, and do like a specific thing that you plan, or you can just like go to Disney Springs and like start walking around and find like something completely unexpected. So it's just really good to have all those options and you know you're never going to be bored. Like I've been here for three and a half years and I honestly haven't seen probably even like 20% of everything that's available. There's just so much to see. Awesome. Thanks, Raul. So next we want to talk about cool classrooms. Um, you know, at Rollins, we really pride ourselves on the intimacy and the engagement of these small discussion-based roundtable classes. Um, but our, our professors get really creative and use all of Orlando as their classroom. Um, so, you know, our marine bio students have the opportunity to go study at SeaWorld. Our English majors, we have um, Zora Neale 
Hurston's um, hometown right right uh, down the street from campus so they can go visit Eatonville. Um, our art majors are able to um, curate art and even display their own artwork in our Cornell Fine Arts Museum, which is right on our campus. Um, this slide obviously is at Disney, um, and this is um, a picture of our political science students who were studying urban development uh, at the Magic Kingdom one day. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. There are um, our film studies students here. Um, we have a really cool um, movie theater called the Enzion, and it's one of my favorite places to go in Winter Park. It's only about a five minute drive from campus. Um, they do critique cult classics and original flicks at this theater. They're a nonprofit art house. So um, really cute little place where you can go and order dinner and see a movie. Um, but here are film studies. Um, we're critiquing some, some movies and meeting with an actual film director. And then Lindsay mentioned before our beautiful Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. This picture is actually a picture you can, can't really see it because it's zoomed way out, but on the stage in, of this theater, we have our Rollins students um, who sing a concert every year for um, the holidays on the stage. So our, our both of our, our music students get to participate. And then also a lot of our theater students who are more on the technical side um, will partner and, and do some of the sound and lighting for this event as well. So just some really cool opportunities. Um, I was on that stage um, a couple of times as a student. And so uh, it was just really cool to be able to say that I performed at the the world-renowned Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. So again, our, our, our faculty get really creative and, um, and try to use as much of Orlando as they can as part of their classroom. Raul, did you have an experience with a cool classroom? Um, yeah, I, I love to talk a lot, guys. <laughs> um, so there's, a, there's actually a cool classroom like right on campus in Orlando Hall. So there's like this outdoor classroom in which there's like a, this kind of oval-shaped table so it's not necessarily of campus, but it's super cool because there's like no technology at all. So it's just like purely discussion based classes. And I had one class session there during my politics of global poverty course. That's probably one of the most interesting class sessions that I've ever had because like not having the distraction of the projectors and the computers and stuff like really allows you to like dig deep into the material. And then um, last fall, so exactly almost a year ago, I went to DC with um, one of my professors for Model United Nations. And it was super cool because we actually got to like practice diplomacy. And if you want to take your cool classrooms to the next level, study abroad. I studied abroad for like eight months and that you take your classroom experience basically to like another complete country. So it's there's just a lot of opportunities for like experiential academic learning that go beyond just sitting down on a desk in a classroom. Awesome. So in addition to the cool classes, we find that um, our students have the opportunity to partner and work and do service with some really cool and innovative organizations in Orlando and in Winter Park. Um, so some of these include um, Clean the World, which is a organization that collects and recycles actual like soap that's left behind in hotel rooms and redistributes it to impoverished people around the globe. Um, and our community engagement office will host different like service events with Clean the World, one of them being like a five minute difference project. Um, so I remember even while we were waiting in line for like one of our lunches um, or, you know, like a kind of a, a gathering or um, we did a five minute difference, right? So we just did like these hygiene kits where we created these in five minutes or less, and then we help, uh, brought them back to clean the world and they mailed them out to the impoverished people throughout the globe that really could use that. So we're really connecting um, our students' passions to meet the world's greatest needs. Um, and we're able to do that with these local organizations that really connect to the Rollins mission. Another one is Downtown Credo, which is a fair trade coffee shop. Um, and we've had students um, in our business classes, such as like the global economy class, actually meet with the leaders um, and 
the organization of downtown credo to help um, do some advertising and promotional work for the organization um, so some really cool experiences there um, another one to highlight um, that's very popular for our students is called fleet farming so the fleet farming organization um, is very close uh, to rollins um, i believe they're um, kind of uh, the head of the organization right now is actually a Rollins alum. And the fleet farming actually uh, has residential lawns in the Winter Park area that transform into micro farms. And then they help take those products and produce and sell it to farmers markets and restaurants in Orlando. Uh, so it's a very sustainable um, organization that partners a lot with our Eco Rollins group. Um, and then another one to highlight as well would be our service and action through our immersion program. So we have a very robust alternative spring break and weekend immersion program where we take students outside the walls of Rollins and we allow them to immerse in different communities. And again, matching their um, passions to the world's greatest needs. And so uh, we work with a variety of social issue areas, um, but we kind of culminate that experience through education, reflection, and action. Um, but I believe, Gabby, you've had some experience with that, if you want to share with, about your Spark Day and different things. Yeah, so I have some general experience. Um, so being a Rollins student, like a lot of it has to do with being in your community and helping your community and service. So if that's something that you're interested in, there's so many opportunities for that at Rollins. Um, it's a big part of like our mission as a school. Um, and so I'm also a peer mentor and um, every year we have Spark Day, which is our day of service on campus. And we would go with our RCCs and do different projects of community service. Um, when I was in my first year at Rollins, we went to an elementary school and um, some people did like physical work outside, like landscaping. Um, I was in a classroom and like organizing books and like cleaning, making supplies, like that kind of thing, which was really cool. Um, and there are so many like diverse opportunities on Spark Day, which is really, really awesome. Um, and another thing about like community engagement is that like, Rollins is in like a college town and there's always that recognition of being a Rollins student, like the community, like the greater community and the businesses like in the Winter Park area all know Rollins and love Rollins. So it's really cool that you have that like greater web of people surrounding you in the community. All right, on to number seven. Um, Orlando has a huge um, entrepreneurial presence. And so you'll see that spirit both in our location and right on our campus. Um, we, Orlando hosts the South's largest gathering of tech entrepreneurs. So it's called the Orlando Tech Meetup. Um, so that's just one example of Orlando's flourishing innovation culture. Um, but you'll find Rollins Tars in the thick of this entrepreneurial experience. Um, we have one of our, actually one of our international business professors, Dr. Kupetz. Um, he founded a, a foundation called K Partners, and it's a nonprofit that focuses on supporting student startup ventures. Um, and so in a minute, I'm going to talk about the um, social entrepreneurship hub that we have on campus, but he has helped really get that up and running. Um, he's also the co-founder of Venvelo, which is a Winter Park based venture capital fund, which is dedicated to innovative companies in Florida. We have um, some alums doing some awesome things. Dale Moore graduated in 2010. Um, right now, he's the operations director of a co-working space called Canvas. Um, he's also involved with Tech Accelerator Starter Studio and tech-focused Venture Capitalist Fire Spring Fund. Um, and then another one of our alums, Adam Schwartz, um, pictured here, also graduated in 2010 um, and then got his MBA from our Graduate School of Business, Crummer. Um, he is the founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar startup called Freshy Tech, which was recently named to Entrepreneur Magazine's Entrepreneur 360 list and Forbes 30 under 30 list. So we've got some people out there doing great things. Um, it all starts with um, the on-campus experience. So Rollins um, was one of the first colleges to implement a, 
uh, both a social entrepreneurship in business major and a social innovations major. And right after we created those two majors, we made sure that we had a space on campus called the Social Impact Hub. Um, so it's a really cool space, very interactive. Uh, it provides tools and resources to support addressing local and global social issues. So if you are passionate about bringing change, let's say to the environment or to education or immigration, healthcare, whatever it is, um, you can head on over to the Social Impact Hub and there are faculty members and staff members there that are going to be able to help you kind of develop these solutions that um, you know, can can really make a change in our world. Um, this social impact hub is located in one of our newest buildings on campus called Kathleen W. Rollins Hall. And um, it's this this is really designed to be kind of a student centered building and um, kind of a one stop shop for any student needs. So it also houses our career and life planning team. And I was going to put Gabby or Raul in the spot and see if you guys have any experience with Kathleen W. Rollins Hall, things that you've done in there, any experience working with career and life planning? I mean, I've worked a lot with the Career Studio. Um, they helped me to like find job opportunities. Um, they helped me with my resume, which was super awesome. They have like a resume workshop. And um, that was one of my first assignments in my RCC was to go to the career center and like have your resume looked over. And I handed them this like big clunky, like two page resume. It was a mess and they like condensed it all into one page and it was so helpful, but it was stuff I never would have known if I didn't ask. Um, so that was really awesome and helpful. And there are a lot of resources like that in the Kathleen W. Rollins Hall. Um, it's definitely just like a multifaceted building. There's a lot going on in there. Thanks, Gabby. And that's a great segue into our next point, which is internship and career opportunities. Awesome. Thanks, Brooke. So yes, with internship and career opportunities um, in our location being the best college city in the US, we kind of look at why does it matter? You know, why does our location of Winter Park in Orlando matters? And we really feel like it matters because of the connections we have um, to internship and career opportunities. So We've um, Forbes actually recently ranked Orlando the number six best big city in the U.S. for jobs and the second um, city in the nation for future job growth. Um, Orlando and Central Florida are home to over um, 150 international companies that represent um, 20 countries to do business here in the city beautiful. We also rank in the top 10 for internships per capita, and we have an entire office dedicated to helping our students with um, those searches and connections, as Brooke and Gabby mentioned, with the career and life planning. So they help you every step of the way from day one, you step foot on campus, and they continue with you uh, through life. So even in 15 years after you finish your Rollins degree, if you want to change careers or you need advice, um, you can connect back with a career and life planning office. They help with um, mock interviewing, resume writing. They have a very robust um, alumni to student uh, mentorship program, um, as well as um, Handshake, which is a database of career and internship opportunities. Um, they also host grad fairs and career fairs on campus. So whether it's our students, you know, working with Florida Hospital, which is just a five minute drive up from campus or walking across the street to a financial firm or a law firm for an internship or even um, interning with um, Orlando City Soccer, um, we have a ton of opportunities right in our neck of the woods. Um, and ultimately, you know, this culminates to the Rollins results, which we find um, about 97% of last year's class were engaged um, in the workforce or in graduate school um, within a year or so of graduation. But this um, kind of highlights one of our recent alums. Um, Michael here actually did three internships with NASA um, at the Kennedy Space Center. He then went on to get his um, 
Masters in Information Management and Systems from UC Berkeley, and he's now um, an engineer with Apple. So that just highlights how all these experiences um, culminate to really pay off in the end. So another fun thing to talk about is food. <laughs> um, and Orlando is a very popular foodie destination. There's always different restaurants to try out. And because we're, you know, kind of a tourist city as well, uh, we have celebrity chef restaurants, uh, kind of in the Disney Lake Buena Vista area. We, we have um, family owned restaurants, James Beard Award nominees, you know, you name it, we have something for you. Um, very vegan and vegetarian friendly neighborhood as well. There's always new restaurants to the popping up. You know, I've lived here about 10 years now and I still feel like there's restaurants that I haven't tried that I wanna try. Um, and so it's really a, a dynamic food scene. And if you like to eat, um, there is lots. Um, this is one of the students' most favorite restaurants down Park Avenue called Prado. Uh, really good pizza there. And then, of course, there's just some really like cool places to grab a bite to eat and study. Um, I know when I was a student, I went to this spot called Stardust all the time. When I had to write essays, I could grab a coffee or a little snack and just buckle down and, and do my work. So I um, wanted to, again, pick on the students here and see if you all have any um, of your favorite restaurants that you want to share. Well, um, it's really hard to choose, honestly, especially in Park Ave. Like, there are so many options. I am personally in love with Bosphorus. It's a Turkish restaurant, and it is, yeah, it's my life. And then also, if you're looking for brunch, Briar Patch is the place to go. They have the best California next Benedict, I would say, in this planet. Um, and then I also like to mention a quick thing about Orlando Magical Dining, which happens like usually during now, uh, like it just ended now on October 31st. So basically, Orlando Magical Dining is like this program in which a lot of Orlando area restaurants participate, including some in Winter Park, in which basically you get to go to all these like world class, super good restaurants, and you get like three course meals for $35 for like certain amount of period, uh, certain amount of time. And I went to this restaurant called The Bohemian, which is in the Grand Bohemian Hotel in downtown Orlando. It's like a double A four diamond restaurant. And it was absolutely amazing. So it's a really, really like good chance to get to try all these really nice restaurants for a price that won't break, you know, your student budget. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Raul. And now, last but not least, our 10th most um, favorite reason why we love Orlando and Winter Park for, um, you know, attending college and living and learning would be because it's always sunny. So, as you know, uh, Winter Park and Orlando are in Florida, which is known uh, to be the sunshine state for a reason. We have about 236 days of sunshine every year, and Rollins's campus is actually located on a chain of lakes. Um, our backyard is Lake Virginia, so we have a boathouse and offer students um, the opportunity to paddleboard, sail, um, canoe, join the crew team, you name it. Um, there's tons of different um, opportunities to enjoy the warm weather. You can also read and study in the gazebos down by the lake um, or enjoy the outdoor classrooms that kind of open year round. Um, in addition, we have a lot of, uh, again, outdoor spaces uh, like our main lawn called Mills Lawn in the heart of the center of campus where we have a lot of um, lawn games and yoga um, on the lawn or kickball tournaments or flag football, um, a lot of different recreation um, things too, or even just some Adir nice Adirondack chairs where you can, you know, hang out between class and do your reading or catch up with some friends. Um, but Gabby and Raul, do you have anything you would like to add about our beautiful weather and things to do? I mean, it's really true. It is always sunny here. And if you're coming or you're looking from a colder climate, um, which I did, I really wanted to get out of the cold. Um, it really is something that never gets old. And you don't realize the opportunities you have all year round. Like you can go outside and exercise or walk whenever you want to. Or like it is really convenient to have the lake right nearby. Like I was supposed to go paddle boarding this weekend with some friends. We had a tropical storm. 
maybe that's the exception to the sunny in Orlando. But um, other than that, um, it's just so nice to be able to hang outside all the time. Um, the outdoor classes are amazing, um, but I just, I really enjoy the weather coming from a very cold climate. All right. Well, we went through our 10 reasons why we think this is the best um, college town in, in America. Um, but we wanted to go through and just see if you guys have any questions uh, and would love to chat more. So there are some questions already in the chat, but feel free to um, put them up there if you haven't already. And I'm just going to start going through them. So uh, first question, is the campus enclosed or is it kind of mixed into the town? It's a little bit hard to explain, but we are, you know, the campus itself is kind of our own area. It's 70 acres. That's all kind of um, connected and, and just our campus, but it really just um, merges right into the town of Winter Park. All you have to do is cross the street called Fairbanks and you are right downtown Winter Park. So it's very easy to just walk across the street and be on Park Avenue and walking downtown Winter Park. Um, Technically, the campus is not a closed campus. So like um, you'll see Winter Park residents walking through campus all the time, people biking through, bringing their kids and their dogs. You know, it's, it's just kind of a really, it's, it's definitely got a community feel. It has somebody, oh, sorry, go yeah, ahead. I'll take the next one. Um, we have someone that comments that they're interested in the Disney College program. Um, I would say, again, with our proximity to Disney and Universal, um, it's a great opportunity for internship and job opportunities. Um, but with the Disney College program specifically, um, I can we can help connect you to career and life planning for more information. But I believe the students that I've seen do that particular program, they in a sense, take like a leave of absence from Rollins for that particular semester because you typically live on Disney property and essentially have, you know, a full time internship and you're not really able to get back to campus and still be in class at Rollins. And so, um, but it's definitely, you know, there in career and life planning and your advisor can help work with you if that's something you want to do. Otherwise, we find our students getting um, just jobs and internships. Um, during the Rollins experience at the theme parks. Yep. Uh, so the next question is a great one for maybe Raul, I'll have you answer. Um, it says, as you mentioned all of the recreation and extra things to do, I was wondering how much free time and downtime you all have um, while trying to balance academic and social life as well. Yeah, so I'll say something, and this is feeds into you know how I said that Rollins is about balance, about having like a suburban and like a downtown and then like natural space. It's the same with academics. I feel like Rollins is all about balance. Um, academics are definitely challenging. I'm not going to tell you that it's just like easy peasy lemon squeezy. Like academics are challenging, but I found it very easy ever since my freshman year to be able to dedicate enough time to my academics to do like really well, but at the same time, um, like take time to be with my friends and enjoy the surroundings. So I think it's just, and like a good thing about it is the fact that we are so close to everything that you don't need to be like factoring that much like transportation time into things and stuff like that. So I think it works wonderfully. Like I've never uh, found myself in a situation in which I realized that I just cannot take time for like self care or for entertainment, but obviously it does take time management. Like if you, you like start adjusting to it as soon as you come to college, like your schedule might seem a little bit full at first, but then as you get into a role of classes, it definitely gets easier to balance your assignments and your academic responsibilities with just like being social and enjoying and, and taking time for self-care. So I will definitely say that it's not difficult to balance. You just need to like get used to your schedule and then find those times that work with you. We have another question um, asking if classes are held off campus, do students bring their cars freshman year or do they use public transportation? That's a great question. Um, so the classes that have that experiential learning component or, you know, are exploring different organizations and 
Winter Park or Orlando, if you are going on an excursion with that class, um, transportation should be provided for you. We have um, athletic buses and like a 15 passenger van and different vehicles that are owned by the college um, in which your professor and your class would likely travel together. Um, but in general, we did allow our freshmen to bring um, their cars this year as freshmen. Uh, we do have two parking garages that are owned and operated by the college. So in, for general, like, you know, if you want to go to the mall on the weekend or head to the beach with friends, you should have the option to bring a car, but your day-to-day -day life at Rollins, you really don't need one. Um, everything's going to be, um, you know, you're going to be walking or taking a bike, um, bike uh, to campus or sorry to class and um, you know downtown Winter Park is right there across the street you know you'll be walking to the farmers market or grabbing a bite to eat um, but in general it, you know if you want to bring a car you can um, Raul or Gabby do either of you have a car and want to comment on what that experience is I have a car on campus and um, in regards to classes um, I took a lab course last semester yeah last semester and we did have labs off campus quite often um and we utilized carpools so there was no pressure for people to have cars but just coincidentally enough people did um and we were able to get back and forth that way um and a car definitely isn't necessary it's not like a make or break your experience obviously roll doesn't have one but sometimes like you know it is like we have such a great outer like area like to go to the beach and that kind of thing having a car is also like a very fun experience okay i think there was a question about involvement in music um for both music and theater you don't have to be a major to get involved with the any any parts of those programs so um for music specifically, you can get involved in any of the ensembles. Uh, you have, just have to show up and, and do a simple tryout and we'll find a place for you. Um, so there's always a Rollins choir every year, which is a pretty large choir. And then there's a lot of smaller ensembles just based on kind of the students that we have year to year. Um, so you can definitely still get involved. All right, it looks like the next question is, what percentage of students um, graduate in four years? Um, I believe it's about 70%, um, but I will say you do have an advisor from day one and the curriculum is really designed to be completed in four years. Um, we have students that are double majoring in physics and art history or, you know, business and psychology um, or even on our accelerated management program track combining their undergrad with their MBA um, students studying abroad doing multiple internships um, and we're finding that they're able to do it within four years it just you know takes careful planning and um, communication with your advisor to map out their course planning um, but students typically do four or five classes per semester and find that they have plenty of time to get that degree done in four years and the next question is what percentage of students obtain gainful employment upon graduation um, we have we have our stat is that 97 percent of our students are either engaged in the workforce or have enrolled in a grad program within 12 months of their graduation um, and so you know any given year usually about 20 to 25 maybe 30 percent of our students will go right into a grad program and the rest tend to go right into the workforce um, and then gabrielle asked about neuroscience and kind of just the stem fields in general so if you're interested in neuroscience, we do have a neuroscience minor. You can major in biology or um, be on the pre-med track if that's what you're hoping to do. Um, and there are definitely a lot of hospitals nearby, um, very close to campus. Um, so our students have had in internships with Florida Hospital. Actually, Florida Hospital reserves one um, spot specifically for a Rollins student. So um, that's really cool that they uh, have that opportunity. and. Um, we have a huge medical research city called Lake Nona, which is about 30 minutes from campus. So lots of opportunities to do some, you know, really um, innovative research in the medical fields. Um, how's the food on campus? Maybe Gabby can answer this one. 
I am obsessed with sushi on campus. That is what I will say. I love it so much. It's so good. Um, but other than that, dining on campus is pretty good. Um, I live in an apartment on campus, so I don't have a meal plan this semester, but we have so many dining options, including like our own on campus Chipotle, which is also super awesome. Um, we have like a little campus like grocery store, which is great also if you're living like apartment style and you just need like ingredients to cook. Um, and then we have like a brand new dining hall, which is also very, very cool. It has a lot of vegan options if that's your thing. Um, it has a lot of like different dietary options as well. So, yeah. Awesome. And then it looks like we have a question about a herpetology club on campus. I don't believe we have one that I know of. We do have over 100 active student organizations and we do allow students the opportunity to create your own organization um, as long as you have I think, three to five um, peers or friends to join and a staff or faculty um, advisor support. Um, you can apply to begin your own organization so you could try to bring it to our campus, but I don't think we have an active one that I know of as well as they're asking if a professor focuses on reptiles. I also am not sure. Um, all of our faculty information is on their respective departmental websites with a brief bio and description, so you might check that out, or um, you can email me um, and I'll help connect you further. Um, and internships in this area, again, with all of the departmental websites, they're going to highlight some of the cool internship job opportunities and cool classes that they offer within those uh, departments. If I can add real quick, Lindsay, I do know, I don't know if it's a specific focus of that professor, but I do know there was some student that graduated probably two years ago or one year ago that did some uh, student faculty collaborative research on like the expression of certain proteins in some uh, lizards here in Florida when they were um, exposed to certain stressors. So, I, and I think that professor was in both the biology and environmental studies department. So, that's as far as I know. I don't know if they are if, like focused in the research in lizards, but I know that they did that. So, maybe. Um, I think his name is Dr. Bruce Stephenson or um, actually no. I'll look it up and then I'll put it in the chat or send it to Lindsay so she can connect you with it. But I, 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 I'll look up the name, don't worry. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Raul. All right. The next question is, what type of transportation options are there for students to travel outside of the campus? I know we touched on this a little bit, but like I mentioned, we have the SunRail station two blocks up from campus if you're looking just to do a com the commuter rail, um, but it does have limited hours, but it's a great option if you get an internship or, um, you know, want to meet a friend downtown um, during the week work week. Um, but then we also have zip cars on campus if you're looking to kind of check out a car for a temporary day um, or a couple hours. And then it's, I think, pro probably pretty popular just to carpool. You'll know plenty of friends that have cars and can get around that way. Um, but most of it day to day will just be kind of walking or checking out a bike from our bike program. We also have a shuttle on Friday nights that goes to Winter Park Village, which is um, I don't know, maybe two or three miles down the road, but it's got a movie theater and a Publix if you need to get groceries. It's got a lot of restaurants. Um, and so that goes back and forth on Friday nights for free. So that's always something to check out as well. Um, and along those same lines, there was a question with so much going on off campus. Are there vibrant, is there a vibrant community feel on campus? Or does it feel empty on the weekends? Yes, I realize we spent a lot of time talking about like the Orlando area and how much there is to do there, but there is always something going on on campus. Every night there's something going on. Um, and I was worried about that, you know, as an out of state student that, you know, it was going to feel like it just dies on the weekends, but it never did. You know, I, I lived on campus all four years and definitely felt like there was um, always something to do if I wanted something to do. Uh, they do movies, they do, um, you know, like Rollins After Dark kind of um, rallies and things like that. So uh, I don't think it's called Rollins After Dark anymore. <laughs> Gabby's just laughing at me. <laughs> but anyway, there's always something going on and, and something to take advantage of. And even students that I knew that lived in Central Florida um, typically would stay on campus on the weekends. So, you know, it, it definitely has a community feel. 
There's been a lot of questions about can freshmen have cars on campus. Um, typically, we've said no in the past. We made the exception this year, um, you know, due to the pandemic and students maybe needing to go um, home or wherever it is. So we made that exception this year. I am not sure if there's been a determination of whether or not we're going to go back to not allowing students to have car uh, freshmen to have cars or not. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure about that. But just you know, we mentioned all of the ways to get around. I really never needed a car on campus to be honest. I always found ways to get around. Uh, it's a pretty walkable area. Awesome. Um, we've also had a couple questions about flooding or storm preparation, um, evacuation of campus, things like that. Um, we have an emergency response team and a 24 uh, seven campus safety um, that monitors storms and communicates regularly with our students and well as uh, their parents via text, email, phone calls. Um, there's a whole emergency communication plan. Um, if we, the good, I guess the good thing about hurricanes, um, you know, unlike maybe earthquakes or other things is we know a little bit of notice if they're coming. So uh, we do ask that every student have a plan. Um, so you have to communicate, um, I think in your student portal, like if you are asked to evacuate who you would be kind of going, um, you know, evacuating to, or would you be traveling home or what your plan is? Um, unfortunately, we don't have like a hurricane shelter right on campus, but we do partner with local um, Winter Park and Orlando shelters and do provide shelters for students if they are um, not able to go home or go home with a friend. Um, and I believe maybe, what was it last fall? We might have had a storm that we had to do this, uh, but it, it kind of can vary year to year, you know, as to if they come to Central Florida or not. But we definitely are prepared and communicate regularly around this. I'm just being mindful of the time, and I, I want to let you know that we will get to all of your questions. Um, whether that happens tonight, maybe not. But if we don't get them to if we don't get to them tonight, we are going to just take a record of all the questions and we will um, follow up with you via email if we didn't get to your question this evening. So I think we have time for just maybe one or two more. And one of the common ones that I've seen come through is do is there an active Greek life on campus? So I was I know Gabby, you know, you're involved with Greek life. Do you want to talk about your involvement? Sure, so um, when I was a sophomore, so I was a new student when I was a sophomore, um, I went through formal recruitment for sororities um, and I ended up joining one of them. Um, and it's a very large, it's a very um, prominent like life on campus. There's a lot of students that engage in it, but it's definitely, if you're not involved in it, it's not like you're missing out. Um, and it's not like, you know, there's, uh, like, you know, less to do, but um, there are quite a few fraternities and sororities um, uh, who like host philanthropies on campus. And I don't know, it's a very fun experience. I really enjoyed it. Great, thank you. Um, there's also been a couple of questions about um, internship opportunities and are they mandatory? Um, so Raul, do you wanna talk about internship opportunities a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So, um, in the forefront, some majors do have an internship component to them, such as uh, such as an international business major. I know that, uh, that it requires like a uh, an internship in the area, but usually uh, it is not an academic requirement per se. But I mean, I would say that it is the most common thing to pursue for students at least one of the summers or like during one of the semesters if it works with their schedules. Um, and you also can get credit for internships if, if that's something that you're interested for. But in and um, I know the Career Center, like the Center for Career and Life Planning, they are very involved in internships. Like they really will help you find something that fits your needs. And also we do have something at Rollins for a summer called the um, Gateway Fellows Program in which you can apply to get funding for your, for your internship. So if your internship is, let's say unpaid, um, or even if it's paid, um, you can apply for funding in case you have to relocate and like live outside from home or, or something like that, or if there's any cost related with your internships, Rollins can actually give you a fellowship to cover those. And then you would also get credit for that internship that you partake in. So 
I would say that internships are definitely common um, for Rowling students, even though they are not required. And, you know, it doesn't hurt the fact that we're in one of the, um, like, fastest growing metro areas in the country and also with a lot of like job growth. So it's definitely very common to get internships. And I would say it's like a key part to the educational experience and getting to know the career path that you want to follow. So I think we um, maybe we'll take one more question. And again, I promise we will follow up if we didn't get to your specific question. Um, I will uh, be emailing you. So. Um, so I'm, I apologize for running low on time here, um, but one of the more common ones that I'm seeing is, um, are you, um, can you participate in research at Rollins? And um, yes, you can. That's one of the things that Rollins offers for all students. Doesn't really matter what year you are, what major you are, you can participate in research if you want to. So it is one-on-one -on -one research with a faculty member. And you and your faculty will submit your proposal for your research topic. And as long as it's approved, um, Rollins will um, allow you to stay on campus. Um, they'll pay for your room and board and meal plan um, over the summer. And then they'll also pay you a stipend on top of that uh, to be able to conduct this research, this independent research. The goal obviously is to be published by the end of your experience. Um, and our students have traveled all over the United States presenting their research to the higher ed community. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty cool that you can do that in any major at any point during your Rollins career. All right, any last minute uh, things you guys wanna wrap up with? <laughs> I would I'm just add that we don't have a gator problem. I saw that in the chat and I know that that's actually a very common question that we get from our out of state students, especially when you sometimes see the news about Florida. Uh, but no, I've lived here, I think 13 years at this point and I've never seen a gator um, around Rollins or on our, the chain of lakes that we're on. Um, I think they've seen maybe one in the past 20 years and it's removed and relocated. So uh, no worries about that. Thank you. All right, you guys, we have come up on our time. Again, I'm gonna follow up with you if I didn't address your question, um, but thank you guys so much for joining in. This was a really fun session for us. I think we love talking about, you know, Rollins and our location. So it was really fun for us and um, we're excited to work with you all as you navigate your college search and hopefully submit your applications to Rollins. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, this video or this uh, webinar has been recorded, so if you um, logged in late or you have a friend who you think would like to see it, please share. It will be up on our YouTube page, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, but thank you guys again so much. Have a great rest of your evening uh, and rest of your week. Bye.